Today, I'd like to talk about waterborne acrylic dispersions and a special way of making them. If we're having a look at what waterborne acrylic dispersions are, you can imagine them as little plastic balls swimming around in water, and these balls contain a very large number of polymer chains. To prevent these balls from coagulating and merging into each other while they're still uh, dispersed in water, there is something necessary that's called stabilization. So what you simply do is you put something around this plastic ball to repulse each particle from each other so that they don't collide and that they don't merge before they get applied on a surface. Most acrylics are using emulsifiers to do that. If you use an emulsifier to stabilize a plastic particle, it's called a surfactant. And uh, today we're talking about our AC3600 series, which uses a different mechanism to stabilize these particles. And this mechanism is called grafted electrostatic charge. This is a picture illustrating how regular emulsifiers are used these are the two plastic balls that I mentioned earlier. And you can see that on the surface here, you have a lot of anionic and non-ionic surfactant distributed, and they fulfill two purposes. One is they give a steric hindrance. When two particles come together, you can imagine that these little tiny stings, they push away each other when the particles get too close. And at the same time, they also have a certain negative charge so that negative charge and negative charge repulses each other so that you get a little bit of an electrostatic repulsion when these particles want to collide so that that doesn't happen. When we're looking at the AC3600 series, you see that instead of an emulsifier or surfactant, we're adding or grafting small chains of electrostatic charge on the surface. And the big difference is that the amount of negative charge that you get on the surface is a lot higher than what you would get with emulsifier stabilized acrylic. And that has a lot of advantages, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. In the next slide, we'll see a measurement so that you get an idea of how much more repulsion force we're having. The blue curve here is showing an emulsifier stabilized acrylic, and the green curve is an AC3600 series product. And you see that on the X axis, we have the pH value. And it is quite common that waterborne acrylics get more stable with higher pH. And you see that the blue curve actually goes down, which means there is a higher negative charge. You see that on the left side here, a stronger repulsion, the higher the negative charge gets. Okay, so the lower the curve, the higher is the repulsion force. And when you compare that to the 3600 series, you see that you get a lot more charge and even, you know, with higher pH values. So at pH 7, which is the minimum, I would say, for waterborne acrylic dispersions, typically, we get a difference of about 2.5 times more repulsion force between the particles. And at highest pH of 10, we get even 4.2 times the repulsion force of a regular emulsifier stabilized system. There is also an effect on the refractive index. Because it's lower, it, the, the dispersion seems to be more translucent and gets closer to the appearance of a solvent borne system, which in some countries is actually quite important. And in some countries, maybe even the most important thing about waterborne acrylics is how they look in the can. Okay, so the in-can transparency is much better than with an emulsifier-based acrylic. Also, during application, when you spray out your parts, you will see that the spray is already very clear and, and very transparent. It has a very nice wet 
appearance during spray. And also in a dried stage, these acrylics appear very, very transparent. And especially on dark substrates, you don't get this hazy whitenish appearance that you might know from other type of, of waterborne acrylics. These 3600 series products don't contain much emulsifiers. So there is a, one advantage on formulation that I wanted to highlight, and that is foam stabilization. In this picture, you see two products. On the left side is an emulsifier-based standard acrylic, and on the right side is a product from the AC3600 series. And I took both bottles and shake them well for 10 seconds. And this is what, what you see. The foam is a lot higher with the emulsifier-based acrylics. And this was just 10 seconds sh shaking, okay? It gets worse if you mix it for half an hour or an hour, you get more and more foam, where the 3600 series doesn't create much foam, and therefore it's much easier to deform the system. You need less deformer, or you can use something that is less aggressive, where you don't need as much shear force to incorporate it. So that is a, a nice advantage on the formulation side. This is a brief overview for you on the product range that we currently have for the 3600 series. The basic physical data is shown in the table. I, I won't go through, through it one by one now. Uh, this is more for the reference afterwards, because I'm, I'm sure you got this presentation as a, in your email. What is common for all these products is that they are all multi-phase products. Because the way they are made, it, it is inherent that they are all multi-phase products. So they actually have multiple phases with different TGs. So they're all multi-phase. And most of them are actually also self-crosslinking. That is something that we can, as a, as a manufacturer, decide if we want to add the self-crosslinking chemistry to it or not. Another thing that comes with low surfactant or emulsifier content is good water resistance because that the emulsifier is actually the most hydrophilic part of a normal acrylic and leaving let's say most of it out is giving good water resistance throughout the whole portfolio here you see all these products we tested them according to the furniture norm, the Dean 68861. Evaluation is done by the Dean 12720, where five is the highest mark. So we put 16 hours of, for 16 hours water on top, wiped it off, evaluated it, and you can't see any watermark or spot. Also, one of the nice advantages for, let's say, uh, joinery applications, if you want to repaint a door or a door frame or something else inside, is the open time. And open time is much longer with these type of, of products because the repulsion force is much stronger than with the conventional acrylics. So at the time where conventional acrylics are all already starting to merge, the 3600 series particles are, are still separate, and that is actually determining the end of the open time. We'll see it on a, on a graphic that illustrates that a little bit better a little bit later. Even though the, the open time is so long, you don't have to wait for good block resistance. And that seems contradictory at, at first, but also here we will see a graphic that, that explains why that is. But the block resistance is quite fast and good, even though the open time is much longer. Here I've tried to illustrate what's happening during the drying phase. So on the, on the left, on the x-axis, you see the time. And if you apply a conventional standard acrylic, it's drying quite linear. And you see that after a certain time, you reach a point where the open time is over. And that means that the particles start to merge and that if you rebrush that 
part of your coating, you, you won't get rid of the brush strokes anymore. Where the AC3600 series, due to the high repulsion force of the particles, water evaporates, but the particles don't merge yet. It takes much longer before they reach the point of merging. And when that point is reached, the drying is actually quite quick, so that we're also reaching the point of block resistance earlier than in standard acrylic. Another advantage that can be used due to the high repulsion force is shear stability. Especially modern acrylics that use emulsifiers try to use less and less emulsifier because of their known disadvantages like water resistance, other chemical resistance, foam stability. So you're trying to use less and less surfactant. But with that, also the stabilization gets weaker and weaker. And that means if you're putting shear force on an acrylic that has less surfactant, it will coagulate when you put pigments in or when you shear it with too high force or power. So the AC3600 series can actually be sheared and mixed very well. And I made in, in my laboratory some trials where I just put AC3630, just put in some titanium dioxide, mixed it very well, and it was doing very well, no coagulation, but also a high stability. And that's something else that these particles do because their their adhesion to the titanium dioxide is so well that they're attaching to the titanium dioxide and then stabilizing it also in the in the paint so you get some kind of a pigment stabilization out of it and that supports anti rub out effects for example and of course anti settling because the particles, the, the coated pigments, they don't settle as quickly as they usually would because the, the, the polymer particles that are surrounding it are repulsing each other. So it's harder for the, for the pigment particle to fall down and get to the ground of the paint. Due to the fact that there are some low molecular weight parts in this type of product, you're also getting a nice unfeuerung where there is no English term for it. It describes how the appearance of the wood changes when you apply it. So here in the picture, you can actually see a demonstration of, of what I mean. When you apply a 3600 product on wood, you see that it gets dark. The, the grain is more emphasized and darkened. I know that that is an effect that's not always desired. There are different ways of what people want. There are some that, that really want like natural coatings. In that case, you shouldn't use a 3600 series as a, at least not in the, uh, in the base coat. It can still be used as a top coat if, if you like. But if you want something that has a, a strong unfoiling you, you should definitely look at the 3600 series because it's really, really nice. I would say very close to a solvent born system. Here's another list of the products that we currently have. This time, not with the physical properties, but with the main key features that we see with these products. And I will highlight a few of them. The AC3600, for example, that, that's uh, on, on top of the list. With an MFFT of zero degrees, you can actually formulate very low or non-VOC paints and coatings for interior and also for exterior application. It is a very, very nice universal resin, a, a real workhorse. And the film is not as soft as you might expect from an MFT Zero resin. So it still has some good scratch resistance and surface hardness coming with it. AC2626 uh, is the best product we have in our product line, not just the 36 series, but the total product line of Elberding when it comes to hand cream and fat and oil resistance. 
it, it is phenomenally lipophobic. So if, if you are struggling getting getting good hand cream or fat resistance, this is this is definitely worth having a look. 3630 is made for furniture coatings. It's a good um, all around resin with, with the key features that furniture coatings demand. So the chemical resistance, the block resistance, scratch resistance, it's, it's doing all of that very well. There is a, a version where we decreased pH to decrease the, let's say, greenish appearance that you sometimes see on, especially on oak wood. So there's a, a small variation of the 3630. 3650 is made without all the expensive stuff that we usually put in. It is price optimized. So if you're going for a very economic system where you have a strong pricely competition, then the 3650 is definitely worth a look. 3660 is the hardest uh, product of our product line in the 3600 series. The scratch resistance is extremely well. And another thing that 3660 does uh, better than everything else in our whole portfolio actually is a tire pickup resistance. That's needed when you go for concrete flooring like garage floors and you don't wanna have tire yeah, plasticizer coming out of hot tires, decoloring your floor. That is what AC3660 does very well. And then there is one product with OH functionality. So you can use it for two component systems, cross-link it with isocyanate, and that is 3699. That's the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, I will answer them very gladly. If you want to have samples, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.